Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by these great sponsors. Axon started out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. Imagine having 100 years of tire and wheel knowledge in your back pocket the next time you sell a piece of ag equipment. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. This podcast is also brought to you by Valley Transportation. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 or go to valleytransinc.com for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. This podcast is also brought to you by AgDirect. No matter how you buy your ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, AgDirect can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. Moving iron in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Moving iron time and time again. Through the years you'll find us here. Moving Iron. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast number 250. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Axon Tire, helping dealers move more iron for the past 100 years. For more information, go to axontire.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 or go to valleytransinc.com for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. And no matter how you buy ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. Once again, I have the man, the myth, the legend, Aaron Fentil, co-host extraordinaire on the Moving Iron Podcast. How you doing, bud? Co-host anyway. <laughs> I'm good, man. How are you? No, I can't complain any. You know, it's, uh, it is a... Uh, bit warm for this time of the year but we've been getting this you know it'll be like negative 25 and then 50 right yes so you get this so what's that do to your sheep not much what the the biggest concern sheep related is is it ever going to bring any moisture our way yeah, whatsoever true. yeah <clears throat> otherwise they're all going to be living somewhere else so well yeah there's that yeah there's a we need some moisture in a real bad way we do we do. I hate to say this, but I am here with open arms waiting for that March pounding. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I thought maybe not, but then I knew better. It, it was coming. Yeah. So how, how's this week been so far? So we're the first week of February 2022. We had a kind of a rip in January. Very. Um, not shocked by that by any means, but... I was a little more. I was shocked by how much busier it was than December because typically you don't have. That. Yeah, I, I was too from the standpoint of of your typical December and the way that worked out for us. But I think a lot of the stuff that we saw happen now is there is a small trickle of some trading's coming in. Right. Yes. And, and a lot of that, that's kind of getting settled up. Right. You know? There's a little bit of fresh meat. Yeah. So I think there's some of that. Just just one little slice of prosciutto. <laughs> That's it. Everybody go. <laughs> so you saw that happen. And then if you had, you know, you go back and take a look at what the overall kind of um, market perspective looks like. Every, the spectrum. The spectrum. Yeah, no kidding. Everything that you look at right now is uh, is a record. Correct. Right? Right. There's nothing that isn't a record. Correct. Right. So if you were to, we had a we had a a, a pop flat of hammers bring record price last week. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Each hammer saying. brought three hundred dollars. Yeah, and then you go look at what happens like today in the marketplace. You know, the markets, the uh, commodity market. You had you had some pretty big moves today in in the markets, and a lot of this is geopolitical driven. I mean, you see some guys out there, but I mean, I didn't get the close today. Let's see, November soybeans were up twenty and a quarter. Um, corn, December corn was up seven and a quarter. March corn was up 14 and three quarters. You know, so you just keep looking at all this stuff. It's just one thing after another. Bam, bam. You know, wheat was up six. I mean, just crazy, crazy, crazy amounts of movement in the marketplace. Now, I read three articles this morning 
that are have that will have something to do with the marketplace. Okay. Three articles all centering around, you know, Russia is like it's a lock they're going to go knock on the door of Ukraine and say, "Do you mind if we come in and if you don't let us come in, we're going to just, you know, for sure, that's gonna, a lock. We're just going to walk in." I mean, that's kind of what everyone's pointing to, who knows. Nobody knows that but Vladimir Putin himself, right? And so post Olympics, I'm sure you'll see something there. Then I read another article about China and Russia, you know, I can't remember the exact phrasing of the title, but it's, I'm paraphrasing here, but it was uh, China and Russia are going to uh, re-examine um, the, the world order, basically meaning that the two of us are going to team up and we're going to go, we're going to fight Team America. Hmm. Um, so, well, uh, I've seen that movie and it ends in our favor. <laughs> So, our, our puppets are better than their puppets. We hope so, right? They don't have a lot of puppets over there, though. That's the thing. Well, they did in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. But I think so there's <laughs> there's some issues there when you start looking at at what you see in the markets driving that stuff, and you got this influx of stuff. And I think most people that you, that you step back and listen to that are quote-unquote experts, that basically, you know, if – they're going. If Russia is going to do something, it's going to be in the next six weeks because it's so cold over there right now. Winter is everything's frozen, so you can kind of get around. As soon as everything thaws out, it's just a muddy, mucky mess. So I, I read a lot of articles about that too. So markets are going crazy, which is also driving up what we see happening in the marketplace, right? So you have a, mm-hmm. you have a in the auction market, especially when you look at what's going on in the auction market, and then the limited number of equipment that's out there, the amount of retirement sales that we're seeing nationwide, not just necessarily. Right. I can't tell you that we have any around our particular neck of the woods, but if you really step back and look and see nationwide what's going on, that's where all these records are coming from. Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. John Q. Farmer decides, you know what? I'm punching out. I'm done. I'm going to take my 300 horse or my 300 hour combine and uh, go sell it out there and I'm going to get, you know, you know, 15% more than and I paid for it. I mean, it's just some ridiculous numbers out there. You know what? Let me hit on this real quick. Sure. Hit on it. If anybody's listening to this and it doesn't sound like 1979, I don't know what to tell you. It's very, very ominous, is it not? My God, man. Yeah. You got the Russia invasion thing again. All right. <clears throat> A huge prospering ag economy ahead of that right. with... Limited availability because they can't keep production up because lots of UAW strikes right. in the late seventies. Trying, I remember that with Harvester in the eighty sixes, Deers in the forties. That's the way they all were. Everybody was rat holing anything they could find. Right. It yep. is a complete copy of that. Yep. Along with a older gentleman of a donkey mascotted political party mm-hmm. sitting in the main chair i think he was just a peanut farmer from georgia if i remember right i believe so yeah. i believe so <clears throat> so i mean very similar to the thing was going on. inflation's you know i mean the feds came out and talked about inflation and i think that's something that we really need to hit on when we're talking about this right now i mean is is the hundred and forty thousand dollar eighty four ten here to stay is that what you're trying to tell me <laughs> I, I don't you know I, no i don't think so we've talked about that you know where we've 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 talked about I gave my I gave my prediction of when I thought you know the bottom was gonna fall out and you know it was going through twenty five and then twenty six, twenty seven we started seeing some problems. You know, twenty eight and twenty nine there are you know Hold on, baby. We better, we better we're gonna start punching out of some stuff and then you know, thirty is a full on panic. Everybody's running. That's kinda my that's kind of my my time frame. You Man, know? you skewed it back a little bit. Because I thought you said before twenty eight was panic. That's when you start seeing the issues, and then the the guys that watch the market and understand what's going on, the guys that punched out in like late thirteen, early fourteen, right? You know, th- those kind of guys that were doing those kind of things, and then you know, thirty, we had more auctions in twenty sixteen than we ever did in fourteen and fifteen. Well, true, right? You know, what I mean, we had more of that. I mean, we went to a lot more auctions in sixteen than we ever did in fourteen and fifteen. Oh yeah, absolutely. You yeah, know? and then that was back when it was you know still having a live auction was a cool thing. Right. Oh yeah, now it's, it's like eh. it, it still is the cool thing. Eh. They're like, yeah, this whole internet thing. Ah, uh, like, ugh, you know. 
So, so now you've got that whole thing playing into I it. I have got to have the dog and pony show. It's, isn't that just the key part of that whole thing? Yes. Having the internet and then the dog and pony show, and you smash those two things together. Yeah. It's perfect. To me, you get way more bang for your buck. Back. Absolutely. I'm not an auctioneer, so whatever. But It's true. But if you only look, if you're selling things for fifty, well, fifty, fifty. I, I'm good at fifty. <laughs> That's right. If you want to sell me, if you want to sell something all day long at fifty, uh, I'm your guy. But, but if you want him to ring, man, he will put on a show. <laughs> but yeah, they've got they've got a uh, there. There's some big hurdles ahead of us right now. Interest rates. I mean, you look at any any lender out there right now, and if you go back to like. October, November of 2021, 20, and then come look what interest rates are today. There's easily an average of at least a half a percent on most guys that have jumped oh, yeah. since then, if not more. I mean, some right. guys have been more than that, you know. And so now you start talking about, okay, what's going on with interest rates and how's that going to play into the factor and these kind of things and da-da-da-da. The only real saving grace right now in the equipment marketplace for anybody that wants to upgrade is – is that there's 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 nothing to pick from, right? Right. So you're selling out of an empty cupboard, and then you're trying to fill back that empty cupboard. But you you know, I've got teenage kids, and it's like as you're putting the groceries away, right? You realize that the bag of chips you just bought's half full. <laughs> like, what the, you've been in the house for thirteen seconds? Exactly. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing that we see happening right now. So I mean. You know, you start seeing all these things move and these things start to take place and these angles are starting to come up and those kind of things. What I'm most worried about is not only interest rates, but is when when is this record thing kind of stop? When does this look like? And and to me, I, I feel like to me, my personal opinion, at the end of twenty two, going into twenty three, we're gonna see that 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 quote unquote premium get knocked off the marketplace. That would I think that's a good thing. Well, I, I do too. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't want to keep like seeing this. It's, I mean, someone's buying equipment at the highest possible place in the marketplace, and somebody's buying, you know, trading, putting it on their lot at the highest possible number out there. And so there's this, there's an old adage, you know, trying to catch a falling knife, and whoever tries to catch that usually gets cut pretty bad. And every once in a while, somebody catches that knife and it works like it's supposed to. Right. Yep. But but typically, most people, when they, quote, unquote, catch the knife, they already kind of had a plan in place of when they were going to punch out and right. what that looks yep. like. You know? And I think if you go back and look at like what Tractor Zoom is doing with some of their, their newest stuff they have coming out, a lot of that stuff out there is starting to show those trend lines that we, that we want to see. You know, we're starting to see that, you know, that, that ramp up, you know. If you guys want to go check out my blog, I'm getting ready to post it. I'll have it up here soon. But I, I got a blog kind of posted about this, and there's there's some graphics in there that that'll show um, kind of what I'm talking about here. But that that sharp incline in in uh, 200 or 300 horsepower tractors in the month of what was that November, and then the sharp in, the sharp incline in in the number of of combines in December. I mean, it was parabolic, dude. It went right. from being like, boom, okay, we're going to, well, we're slowly climbing the mountain to now we jumped on the rocket ship. and It was one day. One day. One day. One day. It was like a $100,000 jump. And then, bam, it shot up there. And then the very next month, combines did the exact same thing. So, yep. I mean, but then you start seeing where it's at now, and it climbed way up, and it's way, way up here now, and it's kind of bounced, kind of banging against the ceiling. I, I personally don't see... Anything out there right now that's going to drive the market back down, but I also don't see anything that's going to drive the market up higher. Yeah, it. it I mean, it can't. It can't really go down right now for the simple fact of um, there is a um, there's there's just not enough supply out there yet to, to do anything with. I mean, well, it's not only that. So much but of the used stuff is for, there has you know? got to at some point. There's got to come some sanity. With how much are you paying for that used tractor more than the new one? Right. And I, I know it happens on pickups all the time. Sure. I've seen it. Sure. I know guys that tried to buy a used pickup ended up getting a new one with no discounts because if you want a new pickup and it's sitting there, good luck. Right. It's it, There's got to be a point where the insanity 
level that so much of that is out there that it, it's got to stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think, I mean, I, I think. Because be, being out there, the, the boots on the ground thing, you know, trying yeah. to get inventory for us, wherever it may be, and knowing who ends up with it and what they gave. And, you know, they're not they're not an end user. They are bought it for inventory. Right. It just, it's mind-boggling. It, it does. It, it truly is. You step back and you take a look at what, the majority of the people are looking at right now, and if you're a, someone that's buying used equipment, whether you're buying to resell or you're buying to keep on the farm, right? Um, if you're buying to resell, you're you're playing that catch the knife thing, right? Oh, absolutely! You know what I mean? Like you, you've got to be out processing those absolutely. Yep. Like if you got to be having, I mean, those conversations with the next guy, like what, what you know. I've got this coming in. You interested? You know, we can do this, do that, and other things, and blah blah blah, and right. make those things happen. If you're buying equipment right now, depending on what your structure looks like and and, and the ins and outs of what what various structures that come into you, you buying pieces of equipment look like, right? I mean, this might be a time to buy that latest and greatest and set on it for three years. Yeah. And then and then come back and play that game of what something what what where am I at now? Maybe two years, but it's it's something like that because I think if if you're not doing like a, a yearly roll thing or you're not doing a biannual roll or something like that, or you're not the used guy that's that's buying the the one year old trade and you're going to run it for a year or two and you're going to trade it back in with right if you're not like that, set up on a plan right Th- this could be that year where you want to take a look at that yeah and really step back and, and look at that functionality of what that looks like and what the what what your dealer is willing to work with you on or even for that matter i mean there, there's plenty of people out there looking to do stuff and you can play that game all day long if you want to but you're not there's nothing there that you're going to be like you know are you <clears throat> openly going to go out and sell your corn in the open market without some kind of marketing plan or are you going to are you going to do the same thing with your tractor you know what i mean like there's different oh, yeah. ways I, to pro- – you see what I'm getting? You yeah, I, I get I'm it. I get it. So too. I think there's opportunities to go out and do different stuff. And like you and I have talked about it a million times right now. If it's available for sale right now, I mean, holy shit. Right. You're going to get a premium plus on. Right. You know, and that's – You have an 8370R under 1,000 hours? <laughs> Dude, or you have a combine that's got under – 250 separator hours. Yeah, yeah. Man, holy crap! Those all you know? went bye bye in like a day. <laughs> but that's but here but that's a, that's the other issue with that is that that generated a trade that generated a trade that generated a trade so on so on down the fourth. All of those are gone. Right. Those are all sold. Well, yeah. Now you know I have guys calling on combines <clears throat> like uh, an an S six series, and they have a seventy mm-hmm. or a sixty. That's low houred for that age, right? And they're not gaining much in hours, you know, to jump up to a fifteen, sixteen, right? And it's it's really hard for them guys to wrap their head around that difference, right? You know what I mean? Yep. That and that difference three years ago, be like, oh, okay, you tell me what you want to trade, and I'll see if I can make it work, you know. Right. Yeah, that's that's a lot of this too. Is that you're, we're putting deals together that are, all right, cool. Well, let me see what I can do. I'm gonna take these two pieces of rope, see if I can't pull it together oh, hard yeah. enough exactly. to tie the center off to make just enough. To, and luckily, right now, that rope, there's plenty of slack in that rope, right? To make some very unique things happen. Oh, absolutely. You know, do it every day. I mean, yep. that that the only thing that does get done now. Is is unique, right? You know, to a point. Yep. And you start looking at. But my big concern right now is is something, I I had it figured into my mind of of what this looked like, you know. And if you've listened to this podcast and you've listened to Rich Possum when he's talked about interest rates and what that looks like, his his feeling about this interest rate thing is that, and this inflation thing is that it's very short term. Right. This is, okay. you know, once manufacturing gets ramped back up and there's enough 
goods out there versus the money supply, then all of a sudden inflation comes down, interest rates should fall along with that, and then... So it's a blip, not here to stay. Not here to stay for a long time. But he does think in 2030 that there is a, a massive... A big shift. A big shift backwards in, in the economy. So as you, as you think about that and those things start to play in and what those factors look like, I mean, right now... Even though interest rates have come up. So, hold on. Time out. Yeah. That could be an extra ass kicking. <clears throat> like, what do you mean? Well, say you go two years from now where you're at the tail end of the insanity, the premium or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's two years from now. That's 24. Right. Six years after that, the bottom falls out. Be scrambling before. I think I think that as the the premium comes back off and things get back to quote unquote normal, that it's not going to be some. It's not going to be like this massive gutting of the market, right? It's just going to be that now you know, a uh, uh, you know a, a five hundred hour, you know. 300 horsepower row crop tractor is no longer, you know, you know, seven and a half percent of what it was. When oh, it was new, right. You know what I mean, right. It's not just less the price increase. Right. Thing, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, it settles back down to like, okay, so now we got some more regular structured things, but I still think the demand's going to be there. Oh yeah. I don't the, think the demand's going anywhere. I get what you're saying about the gutting too, because we don't have. There's 11 to get. 11 billion right. 2012 S670s and yep. 24 row planners yep. coming out of our ears. That's the saving this, grace this with the, the whole thing. This is the one unique thing about this whole marketplace is that we're not selling into anything. Right. Exactly. Right? We're just selling to hope to get something. Exactly. I mean, and every other downturn that we've ever been a part of, you're selling into even when there were equipment shortages. I can even like in 2010 when there was equipment shortages around, like as the, as the ag economy took off and ran before it got to 2012, even then, yeah, you didn't have a lot of quote unquote use and, and lead times were doing this. When I first started doing this in 2006, I mean, we're talking like lead times back then that were like nine months to a year out, and people were like, how, how, how are you supposed to go out and do this when you're dropping off the one and you're wanting me to give you a trade value on the one that you're just now getting? You know, right. I mean, you haven't even used it yet. Right. <clears throat> we, even though there was that kind of demand, we were still selling into a pile of equipment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, like there was never a, a time when we looked back going like, well, you know, we've, we've only got 75 combines. <laughs> yeah, you know I, I mean? know. It. You know what I mean? Like, and <laughs> exactly. That's kind of where we are. Like we got 75 combines. We feel like if we have X or we've got, you know, you know, 65 or 66 row crop track or whatever the number it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've got Your healthy inventory level. And my, my, I remember my rule of thumb up forever as user equipment guy was always if you've got X number of combines, I don't really care what, what kind of, what number of heads you have, what kind of heads you have. You just need to have twice as many heads as you have combines. Because typically you had a row crop head right. and you had a platform head of some sort. Right. right. Yep. So that was, you know, if you had, if you had 75 combines, you typically had 75 or, you know, 50 to 75 corn heads, and you had 50 to 75 platform heads of some, right. some caliber in there, right? And, I mean, now we we just don't have that problem to sell into. No, I mean. And I, mean, I, and I really believe that if you had full-fledged, you know, typical six- to eight-week, you know, you know, whatever, 12 week lead times again, and you're getting tractors and combines like you're right on time. Well, there. six months. <clears throat> Everything was ginning like it was supposed to. I, it would take three years to fill the, the market back up with used equipment. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, because you got to do that three times. Like, you got to take three generation trains and have them sit there. Okay. Now we're going to have them sit there. Right. And, and they're, and they're not going to sit there. Right. For quite a while. And that's the problem. It's like there's just this constant. Pick up, pick up, pick right. up, pick up, pick up. Yeah, you know, I mean, because typically you had this whole thing set that, up. That just know? that whole thing just totally justifies your map, your your calendar for this whole thing. Congratulations! I appreciate that. Thank you. But it's, <laughs> one of those, it's one of those deals where you have, as you look at this and those things kind of gin along. 
you're any in any given market, you're going to sell about seventy five percent of what you've got back into your AOR. Right? Oh yeah, and that other twenty five percent is a six one half dozen another when it comes to. Am I selling it back to somebody here? I mean, I got a jockey I'm going to sell it to. Am I looking at some other diesel transfers? And they're going right. to trade some stuff export. back and forth, export, whatever it is. That out of the 25% is what's going to sit there and stay. So by three years' worth of that stuff coming in, you're back up to 75% of your overall marketplace, assuming that you don't do anything with that 25%, right? That's just some hard, fast thing. Oh, yeah. You're like, you're like 75% full. Right. Right? And the fourth year... You're 100 percent full, and now all of a sudden we're like, oh, oh, oh man, oh. I get, yeah, you know, see, I'm comfortable. That's but, where that but saying. that would be that would only be the case if you left that 25 percent alone. Well, at that point, I mean, like if you parked it out back and did nothing with it. So what? What was the big factor in 20, 2012, 2013, 2014 that was driving that that behavior that we saw? Everybody was buying new, right? Yeah, it wasn't like there was a lack of money out there. Right. There was just nobody that was like, I, my, my, my problem is I have too much money to pay. And I yeah, have to I've had, I've had that for six months. I'm tired <clears throat> right. of it. I need yeah, another one. So my, my accountant says I need to somehow, guys coming into my office like, well, account had to talk to my accountant, and I got to spend $250,000 in the next two weeks. Like, right. What? Need, need a hand? <laughs> Why don't you just write me a check for $250? we will call it even. Here, <laughs> I have a list. <clears throat> Consulting fee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But then all of a sudden you have this guy that comes into to your office and says, you know, hey, man, I got to spend $250,000. Okay, great. What do you want? I've always wanted a new X. Right. I always wanted a new Y. Yep. Awesome. I hear you. I've got this near new. Over, no, I want the new one. Yep. Exactly. That's where, that's that, what, that's what always, that's what drove that problem. Absolutely. And that's, that's where I think we're going to head into that as we start going to the thing. Yeah. And, and you're right. We are. We're also mirroring that to a point, but it is so lagging in catch up, mm-hmm. catch up time that yeah, it's it's gonna take it's gonna take a while. Yeah, no doubt. So that's why I think when I'm, I'm talking about it, twenty five is when we're full. Twenty six people are like oh, it feels like we're kind of full. Twenty seven is like we're full, and then twenty eight is. Holy crap, we're full. Then, <laughs> yeah, but, <you> know? <laughs> but there again, that's only if you don't do that 25. If, you, if you're if you actively trying to move that other 25. Yeah, but think shit, about it. Maybe, maybe in 28 you're going, oh, even, but even we as do good have some as, inventory. As you may be moving that stuff. You still are going to run into that wall of, you know what, I've got the S680. and Or no, I've got the S780 right now. Right. That's the 2018 780, and now we're we're looking at the 2023. And instead of me buying the uh, the, the the 2018 and jumping to like a 20 or a 21, I'm just going to get the new one. Right. You know. Yeah. Go ahead and get the new one, and you, then we'll go. You know. You're back to that skip we'll, a generation yes. deal. Yeah. And that's a that's a bad deal. That that is what causes the problem. I mean, when, when you had ninety six hundred guys, ninety six ten guys, yeah, no that shit. were jumping to a seventy seven a seven ninety seven seventy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like they were jumping over. I want to okay, trade combines. I don't oh, know you if want you like a sixty, works, but you're spo- you're supposed to buy the fifty series, <laughs> right? Okay? And this fifty series guy is supposed to buy the seventy series, right? Or at least yeah. at least the non bullet rotor sixty series. <laughs> right. Come yeah. on, right? So. That's where I think it's gonna it's gonna cause that fill up. Right, I get it. Yeah, the hiccups are. Familiar. I think it it'll be we're gonna get to the time of year here real quick. Yeah, where. It doesn't matter if there's only two 370s left. The paying attention to that probably isn't quite so dire, and maybe that will... It better be. Bring... Well, no, just just let yeah. me play this out, and okay. maybe that will give everybody a chance to breathe for a second, and then maybe some more, another wave. Not a wave. There are no waves. A tiny sprinkling of fresh shows up again. Post post planning, yeah, yeah. I think there could be something there. 
I think I think giving given how important spring is, it, it's no big deal to switch grain cart tractors, tillage sure. tractors, right. planter tractors, strip till that that's typically married for the season. Right. So you got your you know, you got half of March, second half of March to the middle of May where new tractors here, well, I'm not switching. Right. You know. That that's that's the key it, factor. It's just, just right it's there. just like yeah. we talked about with planners. <clears throat> right. You know, there there could be new twenty twos unused but traded on twenty threes because it's part of the role. Right. You know, yeah. we've we've talked about that because that's fine. It's here. I'm not switching, right? And and the tractors, you know, in those two specific jobs, mind you, mm-hmm. are in the exact same boat. Right. If you're not going to switch that planter, you're not going to switch that tractor either. Exactly. You know. Yep. And I think that's a it's a key factor that you made right there. A key point that you made right there. Unless you're getting well, how about that? <laughs> Unless you're getting, I'm talking implement wise. I'm not so much talking about the actual physical machine. Like for example, if if you bought a brand new combine and a and a brand new corn head, right, right. and it's going to go to the field, that that is not the same as getting a brand new planter, right? No. So like you can take the the combine and the head, you go run it in the field, and you get it set, and you do your thing and you go out there and, and you go out and make it work like it's supposed to and everything's like everything's golden right the used one gets back on the truck that dropped it off you're happy as a lark driving your new combine around the field right sitting in the seat in sitting. your new combine yeah. as it drives around the field <laughs> exactly <laughs> touche <laughs> exactly right. yeah so so i mean i guess as you now if you look at a planner you are not going to stop unhook your planner hook your new planner up Set your new planner, go through the whole oh my rigmarole of all the stuff that 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 goes along hooking up a new planner. Exactly, and then be like, "Oh, cool! I've only got two weeks left, and my new planner's here." Yeah, right. You're gonna be like, "Okay, you park it in the yard, and when I'm done with this one, you can have it." Yep. As soon as I'm done, I'll be there. Yeah, but I am not stopping and spending three days getting everything yeah right and that's if it goes good and that's what, yeah and then and I get to put all the then all the data that i've got i gotta shift all that data over to the i mean it's just it's like a whole thing well not only you know? that but god everybody's got so much stuff on a planner anymore and guess what all that stuff has its own boxes and guess what all them boxes are in that tractor that they're also not going to switch right and then you, then you start looking at fertilizer tanks and da da oh yeah bolt on fertilizer tanks to your aero crop tractor or whatever i mean it's just it's just a whole thing yep right yep it's a process so now now you start looking at all of that different stuff that's out there and to me i mean the best thing that ever happened to planners and the worst thing that ever happened to planners was 2014 how was that the worst <clears throat> the worst thing that ever happened to planners was that a gutting of the market happened there right I mean, it went from being like there were. Oh, you mean because of their value? Well, just because of you couldn't sell a planner in 2014 and 2015 unless they, it was sold at an auction, right? Because believe me, I tried. Right. Oh, I, I tried a million different ways, yes. a million different things, had, and they were like had several of eh. them participate <laughs> in auctions. I think we're going to go this route, right? Right. So then you like. 85% of the overall used marketplace got sold on an auction in 2014-2015, right? Right. 2016 rolls around, and even though it was, it was a quote-unquote depressed marketplace, how, how many used planners did you see between 2016 and 2020? Far less. Like, hardly any. Like, I don't ever remember really seeing more than one or two, maybe three used planners. It it was sitting on the market. It was a the, pretty good supply until nineteen. Nineteen, it got tight. Twenty was good luck because of all that stuff that had moved out. And it was twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen was kind of like the the birth of the high speed planner. Obviously, right? Deer, I mean, Deer was. I mean, twenty fifteen was a seven twenty five. You could do the EE planner and all that stuff. But I mean, 
precision planning had been around a long time before. Right. Then, right. And so, but putting those things into into play, I mean, we did back when I first came back to Nebraska. I mean, we were we were talking about the whole like born this way or, or right. You know exactly. You know, is it is it born this way or is it a what what was it? I don't even remember the hashtag. I don't know either. It was uh, born this way or uh, you're not precision talking precision donor. Oh, that's what I was yeah, going to say, because yeah. you said was, hashtag. Yeah. That was the thing, hashtag precision donor. Yeah, hashtag precision donor, hashtag born that way. Yeah, and that, yeah. Was, that was our thing, you know I mean? And it wasn't until, I mean, even today, I mean, we've had almost eight years of hardly any used planners on the marketplace. Yeah. And it's, and we're, I mean, Aaron, I really uh, believe we're going to uh, have another eight years of that same thing. Of certain models, though, I mean... <clears throat> Certain models depend on where you're at. You know, if you're, yeah, if you're in like South Carolina, and have a corn planter, yeah, you're probably going to sit around for a little bit. But if you're in Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, right? The 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 Nebraska, Kansas, the, the Oklahoma, pl- Texas. The, <laughs> the, the planter shortage thing pretty much only applies to 24 rows, though. 24 rows or bigger. 24 rows and DBs. There's there's still. A decent amount of 1720s, 1725s. Mm-hmm. The problem lies in those are used in about five states. Okay, so let's, let's, okay, great. And we're one of those states. Right. In our neck of the woods right now. R- right now, yes. Right now, well, because of the shit show, we you, are, we're, we're almost even out of those. But in the last years, since the planter gut, there has been a good supply of those up until this year. I should have said. Okay, so oh, 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 okay. I mean, I, t- yeah, I agree with that to some extent, but I mean, you tell me, with the exception of if you have like a seventeen seventy five, or sorry, a seventeen twenty five, mm-hmm. sixteen row stack fold, or you went like, like a dr sixteen dr twenty four, whatever it might be. If you had any of that kind of stuff out there right now. The only, it was really technically, when you really step back and take a look at that, where our biggest hangup was, was was some of those, like DR type planners, right, right. But I don't ever remember, and I might have some rose colored glasses on right now, in my memory, right. Get but, after it, John Conley. <laughs> If I had something, I'm just a common man. <laughs> drive a common van. Why would you drive a common van of all things? You know, I don't know. but anyway, because his dog don't have a pedigree, so I, what I the hell does it matter? So he's got a van. Yeah, that song came out when conversion vans were a big thing. <laughs> hell yes, you know baby. I mean? So I guess I guess it makes sense. I guess as you take a look at the planner situation, there weren't. Give me one time. I'm, I'm trying to. Th- I'm, I'm really. I'm like racking my brain here, where there wasn't something that wasn't just out of control. Too many of. Too like, well. I mean, it was something like it had you know, you know, two point seven trillion dollars worth of add-ons on it. That there wasn't some planner that we had an issue getting rid of. I can think of all the ones I can think yeah. of in my head had piles and piles and piles and piles and piles of. Of either precision stuff or right. you, some so like hermaphrodite fertilizer system or something. Right. Like that. You're so what you're you're what you're asking is when is the last time we had a planter planter problem? Not just like we had. We always have a single like machine problem. Even today, we've got machines that have been around for a long too long. Right. Right. But I mean, I'm talking like so many planters that we we're like we've got a quote unquote planter problem. Yeah, not since then. Right. Yeah. Other, other than, like, maybe one specific model here and there. Yeah, like a sub- one specific machine, like... 16 row 1720s. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was something like, this one's got, you know, it doesn't have lift assist wheels on it. That one does. I mean, it's right. like, you yep. know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. There's a billion different reasons that come into that, in that 1. one. 1.6 boxes versus three bushel boxes. Right. I would like that. It's got three bushel boxes, but I'm looking for CC. I mean, there's so right. many different things that come into play in that. I can't think of since 2014. I can't think of any place that I've been at where we've had a planner issue. No, 
outside of the onesie twosie little things that pop up right. like that. Yeah. I no, I agree and, with and you. And here's the thing. And that's why I don't see why that gutting of the market has any bad part to it. The bad part is that now that we are we are back in the in the we have never recovered enough. There's not enough flow. We've never recovered enough. We've never opened the dam all the way. Right. To let enough water go down the river to keep it. Keep I don't the, see that as a problem. Flow. It is a problem. And the biggest reason that it's a problem is that you have taken away the ability for a leveling of the marketplace. Hmm. So now that you've had that, we had a leveling of the marketplace from 2017 to 2020. Yeah. I would very much agree that there was a leveling of, of the planner thing. Now, but we were we were on a very, you know, you buy mine, I'll take yours on trade. Right. Take that one on trade, I'll buy yours. Right. There was an easy like, one for one ratio. Well, now you get to here where we're at now, and this one for one ratio, this this little very delicate ecosystem that was working so intertwined with each other, and things were like perfectly happy, and right. everything was gumdrops and candy canes, and the butterflies were flying around with the rainbows in the back. All of a sudden, a giant tornado comes through and just just demolishes all that. And now there's not that one for one ratio anymore. It's a, I want to buy that one, and there's four other people that went. So now all of a sudden, this catapulting of the of the planner marketplace is is through the roof again. Oh yeah, yeah. Does that planner work? Yes, I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that planner. I mean, it's got seat. I mean, it's got row units. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're attached to the bar. <laughs> Is that what you count as working? <laughs> I, I even had a guy call today. I said, he called about a planner that was sold, obviously. He goes, do you have any others? I said, no, not a single one. And he goes, is there maybe a farmer somewhere in your area who would consider selling his? And I'm like, that's where we're at, man. Mm-hmm. That is where we're at. Yep. And- Facebook Marketplace, desperately wanting 24 hour planter. Like, Damn. And I think where that the planet market differentiates from the overall combine tractor sprayer market thing is that there's always enough turnover in those in those three categories. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's a group of guys that will run a combine for one year and get a new one. Then they'll run a combine for two to three years and get a new one and then they'll run a combine for you know whatever three to five years and they'll get a new one or a newer one anyway and then they'll go from five to seven years and get a new one and then there's the guys that buy the 10 year old and they run them forever right, right? They run whereas for 10 years planners you don't necessarily have the every no. year every two every three guys some guys are every two years they get a new planner and then some guys are like yeah hey, you know i got seven i got a you know i got a 1710 that still works great right and that you know that that's the planner marketplace. There's no real ebbs and flows to that marketplace based on the individual person that that buys that piece of equipment. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of. I mean, a planner is the single most important thing on the, on the farm. Absolutely. But it's, but it's also, you know, it's going good. You know, I put a few. New seed discs on it. And I'll put a few new openers on it. I'll put a new gaugeable on it. I mean, those you know, bing, 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 boom. You know, I spent you know five hundred bucks a row, and I got twenty four rows. Next thing you know, I spent twelve thousand bucks. Right, planting. exactly. And whatever, you know, I'm happy with that. I'm fine with that. It goes out and plants, and I'm good to go. Yep. And versus the you know, it's got CCS. It's got yeah. clutches. It's you know, what what it, else it, do I need? It, it does what I need it to do. Right. right. But then there's some that are like I want the cutting edge of everything because I need the individual road to do its own little thing. Right. Right. And that's, that's awesome. And there's, there is a, there is a group of people that that is a perfect fit for them. Absolutely. That, well, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they drive a huge industry. Yeah. I think right the now, the planner attachment industry is just beyond steroided out, man. Yeah. But I think if you look at, if you take a look at, the combine market versus the tractor market, and then compare that to the to planter market, you just can't. They don't. No. They don't match up. They're very different. Very different yeah. animals. Very much so. And so I think, I think that 
the combine marketplace or the combine marketplace, the planner marketplace is going to stay very much 2016 2017 all the way through till the downfall till, till we see a big correction in the marketplace in that 2030 range so through through the rest of this decade i think we're going we're to see a very similar planner market that's that's interesting I just don't think it ever has a chance to rebound. Like I don't ever think there's a minute where. Then why wouldn't it just be out of its mind the whole time? What well, that's what I'm saying. Because eventually supply is going to catch up a little bit, but it'll never catch up enough to be a problem. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Yep. Until t- 2030. Until 2030. Oh shit. So I mean, I where where where, kind of where on earth do we wholesale DB 240s? <laughs> <laughs> I've got 13 of these DB240 high speeds. Yeah. So I think there's a there's a big deal there. So Make sure your tractor has the quad pump. <laughs> 17,000 gallons per minute. Right. Right. All right. So All right, man. Well, I think that's a good jumping off point for this particular edition of the Moving Iron podcast. So Aaron, if folks want to reach out to you and get more information about what you're working on or stuff that you have out there, what's the best place to do that? Real quick, one last thing. Sure. Just for our loyal listeners, Aaron Fintel's kid mm. played Casey Seymour's kid in basketball tonight, and Aaron Fintel's kid won. By two. So that's by not, two. Let's, let's not pretend yes. like it was some kind of blowout. <laughs> I, but, they were up by ten at one point. They, they tried were. to they tried to give it away. They, they did. But yeah. Well, if people want to reach out to me for some reason, uh, call me or text me, 308-760-1193, and also active on the Twitterverse, at A-A-Ron Fintail. Mm-hmm. Those are the best, two. Also on Facebook, if that's your flavor. Mm-hmm. So, cool thing about this whole JF and BS scenario Correct. Is, that, is that those two guys know each other pretty well. Right. And they know that we're good pals so right. when they're out on the f- on the floor it's funny to watch them talk a little shit back to each other right back and forth. exactly it is, it is it is entertaining to watch that so <laughs> no i do i do i do enjoy watching both of them play together it, it's, 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 it's like fun. they've become kind of half-ass buddies because of us <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah so it's a, it's a fun thing so well you can find me on facebook twitter and instagram at moving iron llc.com you can also go to moving iron llc uh no wait don't go to moving iron LLC.com on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just go to Moving Iron LLC. But go to Moving Iron LLC.com and you can find all the information about the Moving Iron Summit coming up in Nashville, Tennessee, September 6th, 7th, and 8th. If you're a dealer and you want to come to that, man, it is open to anybody and everyone that wants to be part of that. Yeah, and you've been to since inception. Since inception. What, what's your thoughts on that? I'm waiting for the, the special reward. You got to speak last year. So. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> yeah. Finally. I, I trusted, I trusted the whole enterprise to Aaron. <laughs> it it is it is absolutely without a doubt the single best event that you can go to if you're a used equipment minded person. Yep, I think regardless so. of color. Yep. And last year, I will just say this: I always enjoyed it being a a green only thing. And last year, being open to all colors made it even better. So red. Other green, yellow, silver, blue, come one, come all. Yep. And I think the, the the one thing that comes from all this is that no matter what you're doing or where you're at, used equipment is a uh, – it's, it's, we all have the same problem. Yes. And it's, we all have the same processes. And, you know, so if you're – But conversely, the more we know each other, the more we can help each other's exactly problems. Exactly right. Because his problem is my gravy. Right. One man's trash is another man's gold. There you, you know go. I mean? So absolutely check that out. So if you're interested in doing that, hit me up, movingironllc.com. Go to uh, Moving Iron Podcast at movingironpodcast.com, and I'll get you all the information that you need. So check that out. All the information is out there. Um, it'll be uh, – it's well worth your time to come check that out. So with that, I am Casey Seymour with Aaron Fennell. Let's go with Iron, folks. Out. Axon Tire is going to have more tips, tricks, and client advice throughout the year and in September at the Moving Iron Summit in Nashville. If you're looking to sign up for the event, please head over to movingironllc.com. We hope to see you there.
Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 or go to valleytransitinc.com for all of your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. And no matter how you buy ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. 